EV man of India. That's what everyone says. Are EVs really sustainable? I would say it's hard, but it's so much easier than when I started. But I think you go along back to Reba, Tesla, around the same time you guys were building cars. In 2007, one of my largest markets was Norway and UK. You could have built cars, but I think you sold your venture to Mahindra. And now the moment of EV has come in. Cost of renewable energy has come down from 20 bucks to, you know, three, four bucks. How's been fundraising for you? I was not able to get any VC or any money. You were not? No, not into, th I got loans. Why don't you talk about a few of those opportunities, which those entrepreneurs can build in the EV segment. I raced solar cars across Australia. We came third in the world. There is the way uh, optimization and AI is coming in and data, right? While for businesses like ours, B2B, it makes a lot of sense. What What's your take on the B2C side? You're running fleets, you're running vehicles, drones, flying taxis, these areas, right? Uh, to me, I think would be another big shift in the next five to 10 years. Awesome. So we have a very special guest. I've been waiting to have Chetan on the podcast because he is the EV man of India. That's what everyone says. <laughs> and I'm in the EV industry. I'm like building something for the last seven years, but you've been building for what? 20 years or more? Yeah, more 25. 25 years. So a lot to learn for me, but we have little time. So we'll cover nibbles of it. Sure. Okay. Thank you so much. First of all, Chetan. Thanks. To thanks. Be thanks here. And what a time to be here because I just heard that you've closed a very large round for your venture, Sun Mobility. So many congratulations there. Thank you. And and this actually paves way for a very strong EV future. That's what I see. How do you react on it? It's about 300 million from IOCL, the PSU. How do you feel? <laughs> I can see the smile, but how did it all happen? No, I think it's been a, a journey for over four years where we've been really working to see how we scale the business across. And uh, can we have a partner that can help us bring assets and scale across the country? And IOCL seemed a very good partner. And we started, we today have over 100 stations. Uh, but now the relationship has changed much more where uh, they're investing around 78.3 million in the parent. Wow. And they are um, in a 50-50 joint venture. They're committing over 1,800 crores in the next three years. Um, the idea is how do we you know, get to a million vehicles uh, in the next three years? and uh, use their 34,000 outlets across the country. Uh, give the comfort to a consumer. You know, if someone picks up a vehicle, they want to make sure swapping solutions available 10 years from today, right? And the fact that the brand of IOCL is there along with us. So it's the synergies of our technologies coupled with um, the brand and the, you know, the, uh, the depth and the breadth and depth of IOCL that you can find them in every nook and corner of the country coming together um, to you know, make battery swapping, you know, which is already a reality, to now bake to the next step to scale it and really enable the end customer to sort of be, you know, the beneficial of having electric mobility that's finally affordable and addresses range anxiety and refueling time. Do you really see an individual who is living in a condominium who typically rides 40, 50 kilometers to use swap as a solution or charging will remain because you're building a battery swapping madness in yes. the country. Uh, and I'm sure one of my investors, Gogoro, uh, would be somewhere. You, you've been seeing them also in Taiwan doing that so well, and now they are wanting to do this. But while for businesses like ours, B2B, it makes a lot of sense. What What's your take on the B2C side? So, you know, even if you look at all the, elect all the vehicles trade, around 20 million, say, scooters and bikes are produced, only around 20% of them have infrastructure, right? So when you think of a driver, someone who's living in a place, they don't have a comp they don't have an apartment, they don't have a house the way it is for infra, and uh, and can't take this plug point there. So for the initial stage, I agree with you that that it is that charging will be a, an important point, and always these will coexist. There's no silver bullet that only one's going to exist, right? A customer who drives 20, 30 kilometers has, a, as you said, an apartment and a charging point, very likely they would do a fixed. Correct. Right? But on the other cases, he's driving more, one day he has to go a different distance, he doesn't have infrastructure, uh, he's not going to pay 50% more cost up front. He started going looking at swapping. So this would also be very relevant at customers. Just think of the scenario. I have three products, they're identical in looks. One's gasoline, one's electric, 
and ones uh, with electric with swappable batteries, right? You walk into a showroom, you can't tell the difference between them. Mm, you can't. Right? Just say they can't, right? That's right. Probably the electric, uh, the, the, the gasoline one today, the highest selling one is probably 1.1 1, 1. 1 lakhs, right? An electric of similar performance, this is 125cc performance, probably around 1.3 lakhs. Probably the, I, the electric minus the battery would be 60 to 70, right. right? So you walk in the showroom and say, hey, I can buy a vehicle instead of 1 to 1.3 at 60 to 70. Sure. Two, my cost of kilometer is half of that of petrol. Right. And three, I can refuel anywhere. Right. And I don't care about the battery. I don't care about warranty. I don't care anything. I don't have to, after three years, spend 50K on a new battery. In fact, with battery technology changing, my battery gets better over time. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's true. Right? So when we remember if we initially... You get a new swap. Exactly. Remember the latest technology. Exactly. When we initially introduced, we were at 1.5 kilowatt hour. Now we have 40% more power. Mm -hmm. So the customer who bought it three years ago is suddenly getting 40% more. So from a consumer, as that comes in and scales... They will be there, and they'll all coexist, right? And and I think it needs to. I'm electric mobility. Yeah, it can't be hundred percent swap. Exactly. What you're saying, but but what percentage would be swap according to you? I think in B two B, I think you know eighty to ninety percent will be. Makes a lot of sense, right there. And I think personal mobility, that people who drive probably above thirty to forty kilometers a day, and I think there can be up to fifty percent in the future, right? Sure. Um, B2C. B2C, right? Because of this upfront cost and everything. And more importantly, when you get into volumes, yeah. you'll have infra issues, right? right? So you're talking of the first piece of customers who are coming in. Think next three to five years, right? Uh, where they would have those challenges with infra. That's right. And then that, I think, alleviates that concern. Nice. So, so, so people will have the petrol pump at the home also by charging. Right. But they'll go to the petrol pump when they need. And they don't necessarily go to petrol pump, right? We I have, mean, I'm right. saying that the battery is hoping point. Exactly. Is a petrol pump of the future. Exactly, exactly, right? And it's not only there, but, you know, uh, we have them in metro stations or we have them at, you know, uh, Tata power stations or we have them even, even in private areas because it's in a corner of a street, you know, and people are, coming from there so you can position this in areas which are very close to customers and therefore they don't feel that they're coming out of the apartment or coming on this or two minutes they swap and move on right correct absolutely no great i think uh, and you started this about four years back the sun mobility no we started in 2017 so, so yeah yeah seven years ago right yeah yeah but i think you go along back to reva uh, tesla around the same time you guys were building cars and then you got into swapping. You could have built cars, but I think you sold your venture to Mahindra. And now the moment of EV has come in, right? Uh, we, we, we were all builders, right? And that's, that's an entrepreneur is all about. How do you feel today as Chetan Mani, who's built the car, who's built the battery swapping, and who's now, you know, uh, growing this? Uh, do you see that? you've missed an opportunity or you've seen that there's a great opportunity still waiting? Just want to know. It's been a long journey. It's been more than that, right? So I started in 1990 racing solar cars and I worked on electric mobility in the early 90s and then Reva in the later 90s and launched in 2001. Always it was around affordable electric mobility. Although deep down I've been a passionate racer and would love to have high performance products. I've heard about it, yeah. And that's always been part of it. I felt that impact in society is about creating uh, sustainable solutions for the masses. And it's much harder because the same technology has to be you know, looked at very differently. I'd say that now everything is coming together, right? The technology uh, has significantly improved, right, in the last 15 years. Cost of batteries at $1,100 per kilowatt hour, it can be you know, at $100, $120 today, so it's come down 10x. Right, oil prices from twenty dollars a barrel have gone to you know eighty to hundred dollars, depending how it's fluctuating on this front. Right, governments um, have completely done three sixty one eighty and supporting today a lot on this front. Um, you have a lot of OEM options. You have investment in infrastructure. Um, the financial community understands investments in EV. Right, um, cost of renewable energy has come down from twenty bucks to you know three four bucks a unit of kilowatt, which means we can power by renewable. Right. So when you think of all of these macro conditions, they've all come together. And the consumer today is far more open-minded and saying, hey, I like, if I can get good performance and, and on electric, I'm willing to go. And today electrics can, at the right price point, exceed internal combustion engine performances too, 
Yeah, they do. So, so when all of this has come, we're actually really at a strong tipping point in the country, mm. right? Um, certain markets have already started that, right? Yeah. If I, you know, used to um, sell in in 2007, one of my largest markets was Norway and 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 UK. And you were selling Reva there. Yes, yes. Wow. I was in 23 countries globally, right? Really? Right, right. So Norway and UK. I was selling more cars in Norway and UK than I was selling in India at one point, right? So nice. Um, but you see today, Norway, you know, almost over 70% of all new cars are electric. Yeah. And I was there part of the early journey. Very so strong. I know where that has gone, right? Yeah. And I've seen that in the US and China and other things. And I think today it's from India where it probably starts on two wheelers and three wheelers and buses and trucking and, uh, and taxis for cars and private cars will go, but not as fast as the other ones. So we're at the right time uh, where I think the next five to 10 years is gonna be highly transformational and very exciting. Yeah. Um, yes, it was probably early 20 years ago, but I think the learnings has been fabulous that I'm able to today use when we're able to you know, hit scale. Correct, awesome. What's entrepreneurship for you, Chetan? I think you've been, you've been doing this for so many years. Right. You never stop, right? You, you wanna keep building. Yeah. That's what I see in you and that's what um, you know, I get inspired from so many entrepreneurs, right, around me. What's entrepreneurship for you? Why do you build? Why why do you get so much stress? What, what's the liking for it? So for me, I think um, when I actually, um, I'm a technologist at heart, right? I came an entrepreneur later, right? <laughs> I think the entrepreneur was to imagine your vision to come true. Yeah. You become an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. And I think... Uh, for me, my aha moment was in 1990 when I raced solar cars across Australia. We came third in the world. And I said, if you can cross the continent in sun energy, wow, this is the future, right? Wow. You did that? And yes. And so I said, if you can combine renewable energy and mobility, which is the reason why it's sun mobility, right. it's about that, right? That is the future. And, and so it started as a technology to say, you know, um, climate change is really critical. And I've got to really make an impact. It was reinforced once when 50 of us spent a couple of days with Al Gore, right? Years ago, right? 15, 20 years ago, maybe, right? When we talked about climate and said, how do we all make impact, right? So for me, it's very, it's a journey about making impact um, and using your skills. I look at your book there. It says, you know, Ikigai, combining what you love to do, right? What you're good at and how you can impact society. Right, as I'm a strong believer of that. And to me, these three come together. In that, do you need to be a technologist? Do you need to be an entrepreneur? Do you need to be a technician? Do you need to be anything? That's okay. That's right. Right, on that thing. So I think it, to me, it's been a journey about pursuing something that you're deeply passionate about, that makes an impact. And um, when things, when you look at something, you're always looking at a glass, you know, not half empty, half full. Uh, when you fall down, you learn and pick yourself up faster and become even stronger um, and view the world as opportunities and how you can make impact. And then I think everything else just sort of happens. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I can so much relate to that feeling of entrepreneurship, right? How's been fundraising for you, right? Right from the Reva days to now where you're known to everyone, you have Sun Group working with you, Mr. Kemka I've met, right? So, so what's the journey like? I mean, for, for an entrepreneur possibly, if you, if you were to ten, tell a young entrepreneur, right, wanting to go out and build a new thing like an electric car which you built out there, what do you think about fundraising? I would say it's hard, but it's so much easier than when I started, okay? It was? Yeah, I mean, in 2099, I mean, you're building an electric car, in India, a product which is a services company, who else in the world has done it, right? So I was not able to get any VC or any money. You were not? No, not into, I got loans. I got loans from Technology Development of, of India, um, from ICICI Bank, and, um, and long-term loans on to enable me to get it, some seed capital. And it's only in 2006 that I got uh, DFJ and GEF and other funds to come in. That's the time when um, clean tech became cool. Okay. Uh, so some of the similar investors that invested in Tesla invested us in 2006, like DFJ. Um, and, and then it started to change that India is this. And as we started to go global and people saw a stronger global presence, they started to view that this is a large opportunity. 
So that was, I think, very important, right? Um, today, I think investors understand India is a great market, right? Um, and they need to be here. They understand transportation is being is, is being transformed, right? Um, they're looking good ideas, good people, right? And uh, they can back it up with a good, uh, uh, you know, a good concrete you know, execution structure that can happen. And I think there is money. There is enough money, but we need to have the light. And we're seeing a lot of people being funded today. Yeah. Uh, the market had dried up for the last 18 months, which correct globally, which Only everyone winter, had to printer, yeah. right? Uh, but it's opening back up now uh, in a positive way. And uh, so I do think that this is, it, it will still be tough, but you see how many ideas and how many companies of startup and EV space have come up in the last 36 months. So many of them. Right, actually. and then look at 36 months before that. So from that point of view, huge change, but there's still so much more opportunity for us to get more money in, uh, I think for investors to look at it. Why don't you talk about a few of those opportunities, which those entrepreneurs can build in the EV segment? Yeah, so I think uh, um, clearly uh, at a component level, right, there are opportunities, but they need to be, so if you're tech oriented, how do you look at BMSs or new battery technologies or new motor algorithm or controller algorithms, um, both hardware and software to, to get it more India centric stuff, that's one. As an OEM, are you and creating India centric products for new markets coming? For example, we talked earlier on where's this perfect B two B bike, mm. right? That's right. There doesn't exist one, so there are opportunities of the perfect last mile vehicle for passenger and goods movement, which have all been sort of not been looked at from a ground up approach, but have put together on this front. So there is that part of it, right? Um, there is the way uh, optimization and AI is coming in and data, right? You're running fleets, you're running vehicles. If you optimized it, you could save 20% of your costs, right? So um, there's a lot of opportunity in graving solutions around optimizing fleet usages, optimizing battery usages, end of life, second life, recycling, right? Because in the next five years, the amount of recycling that will happen will be huge, right? How do you create innovative financing, right? Database financing, you know vehicle data, you know, others, customer data, create new platforms for financing. You're already seeing some companies, but there's a huge more amount of work that can be done. True. Swapping services, entrepreneurship is there, uh, charging services, platform integration to make it seamless. So, you know, if I go, there's a huge thing. If the country is going to grow to where it is in the next five to seven years, where in some spaces we'll get 50 to 90% electrification, just think the transformation. Big time. Look at the bill of material. 50% of a bill of material for electric car is different from an ICE vehicle, which means all of those new suppliers and oh, things can come in that will transform that. So all put together, this is a 75 to $100 billion opportunity by 2030, right? And that's for us to only lose if we don't get it. So, so many opportunities given by Chetan right away. Start building, guys. Get into the depth <laughs> of it, right? Awesome. Now, what's what's next for Sun Mobility, right? So, so while... There's IOCL monies, you've done the JV. What, how are you looking at expansion? So we have... Uh, and what's next for Chetan also? <laughs> so I think that, uh, um, uh, you know, today our goal is in India's side to really grow the business with the, with the joint venture on this front. Um, our technology is very critical. We invest a lot on tech. So the tech and manufacturing uh, is critical. And we're looking at global markets. We're test marketing in Southeast Asia and Africa and, uh, and uh, South America. Markets have the same challenges, you know, the same, so same. So we're going there as full solutions. So we start to see, you know, India is going to be core, but we do expect global markets um, to start picking up. And as we go there, um, we're focusing on two businesses. The one you, you're more relevant is the two and three wheelers. This gets this will be expanded up to you know a two ton vehicle for deliveries. So um, yeah, so like a truck, a Bolero kind of. A truck. Yes, well, a little less than that. Say like a Tata Ace type of product. So up to that, we'll do with current battery swapping, and then we have another solution that goes from 3.5 tons to 55 tons for trucks and buses. Which is what. Um, which is fully robotic swapping. And uh, and we, of course, had piloted this several years ago. And then with COVID, we slowed down that. But um, that should be, we are working with multiple OEMs and stakeholders. And that later this financial year, 
uh, we will probably be rolling out our commercial pilots. Oh, lovely. So, um, you know, if you think of it, India has 70 to 80 percent of these two, three and four wheelers. And we have one solution for them, any one of them, right? One, two, three, four batteries that we can use and modular item. And then two percent. Uh, of one to two percent of the country has trucks and buses, but they consume fifty percent of the energy and fifty percent of the emissions. Yeah. So when I talk to you about our goal and sustainability and impact, I'm just focusing on the two ones that have the highest. Right? Yeah. Two wheelers yeah. use seventy percent of our petrol. Correct. Trucks and buses use fifty percent of energy. Sure. Right? So I'm going where the impact is, and so we look at these three businesses. Yeah. And uh, uh, you know, for us and for me as an entrepreneur, I think. Um, it's the next stage of scaling them, getting them to it, you know, taking these in the next uh, three years to or less to an IPO and building the, each one out independently, uh, building out our management teams, professionalizing it, moving it, uh, still having the entrepreneur spirit, but, um, but keeping it as a professional group that can now grow and scale these businesses to really create an impact. Right. So two, three businesses all wanting to go to IPO <laughs> and you are kind of playing that role, right? Uh, which is great. And what's next for Chetan? I mean, um, you've built so many companies. You, you're continuously building. When do you plan to settle down, if at all? I enjoy what I do every day. I don't see that as work, right? I enjoy building our new tech. I enjoy impacting. So it's, it's fun, right? So it's not work for me. Right. So till I've got that, I'm going to continue. <laughs> <laughs> that's the true builder, right? That's the, that's the entrepreneurship spirit, right? You continue to build and you enjoy. Once a founder, always a founder, right? What do you look at startups, right? Do you like uh, invest in startups, help startups, support them? Or let's say if I ask you any other industry beyond EVs that you are intrigued about, would you want to talk about? It? Yeah. So I... I uh... Uh, I invest in startups at a personal level and through our, one of our companies that um, invest into startups. So we've invested in EV companies and some autonomous technology companies and a host of other things that we do. So yes, that is definitely on the cards. Uh, I do spend a fair amount of time uh, mentoring startups, um, you know, founders or a cup of coffee, you know, learning something, just giving back. Um, you know, uh, from what uh, a little bit that we have and in any ways of, and if I can't invest connecting them with people, that could probably help them in their journey on this front. Um, you know, transportation and technology still excite me the most. So I think uh, drones, flying taxis, um, these areas, right, uh, to me, I think would be another big shift in the next five to 10 years. Um, we, of course, within our business also, within the, our family business, have autonomous technologies and others that we do. We have a company that focuses on that. So to me, these are all our sort of next generation of where things are and, uh, and definitely push the envelope yeah. around technology and new business models and how to sort of, uh, you know, transform that. Awesome. Since we have less time, I have last two questions. Yes. A lot of people even ask me, but I would want to know your answer on this. Yeah. Are EVs really sustainable? And how much, if at all? We, today, so let's two parts to it. There's a well-to-wheel and there's cradle-to-grave, yeah. right? From so well-to-wheel basis, with India's current grid, they're probably around 60% to 70% better, okay? And the reason is, you know, you've got regenerative braking, you have stop-and-go driving. There's no deterioration from year one to year 10. So while there are emissions being created at power plants, the net is still far, far better from a, from a well-to-wheel basis, right? Okay. That's only going to get better because India by 2030 is looking at adding 575 gigawatts, right? Of renewable. renewable. So if you think of it, today it's already better. And every year when the grid gets cleaner, this gets much more. Now, of course, a lot of companies are also creating dedicated renewables into uh, for electric vehicles. So in that case, it can be further accelerated. So, you know, to put this in perspective, if every vehicle in India was electric by 2030, I'm talking 350 million vehicles, we probably need 250 gigawatts of renewable energy, which is half of what we'll have by then. So in, virt in a very theoretical way, the entire nation can be powered, or transportation can be powered by renewable. Wow. And having buffers like battery swapping allow you to, uh, you know, yeah. play around with that part of it. From a cradle to grave point of view, 
uh, a lot of it's coming on the batteries. So when you have lighter batteries, like in swapping and stuff, the numbers are far better, right? And and when you have longer life cycle batteries, right, then it even is even better. For example, in a swapping situation, you downsize the battery by around half, and you have three times the life, which means you're using one sixth the lithium on life cycle basis. Right, so when you start to think it this way, which is very different from having a very large battery pack in a car that you use just a little bit every day, and so you're you're you being have much higher cost. So a lot of the, a lot of these studies which were more large car oriented and European oriented are very different from an India point of view. When we had done, I remember in Reva and later, the cradle to grave numbers are also far better on this front on electrics, right? And then there are other pieces on materials and other things that you use that can make it. But um, but both sides, I think, and it's only getting better, right? That's the key part, right? And there's no deterioration. So we're on the right stage where at a big, broad level, you're looking at energy security and climate change, right? right. Both. Right. And, um, and you're doing it in a sustainable way. So I think... Uh, this is sort of a very strong area from a mobility point of view. That's amazing. Actually, I like the well-to-wheel and cradle-to-grave, uh, you know, <laughs> tagline of yours. I love it. The last thing, uh, the batteries, right? And you're the battery man now. You were the EV car man earlier. Uh, so the batteries, you talk about NMC, LFP, you talk about hydrogen, you talk about sodium, aluminum. Where do you see the technology resting, if at all, what's going to be more pervasive, according to you? So um, LFP and NMC are today probably the largest portions, right? And you guys are on NMC. Right, we're on NMC, right? And uh, 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 LMFP is coming across. Um, sodium ion um, may have more higher cha challenges on transportation for certain concerns, but it could be on storage, right? Um, some new solid state batteries are on the anvil. Uh, coming here. So I think that, you know, um, there will be multiple solutions and there are going to be different solutions for different applications. I want very long life. I want significantly high temperature performance. I want low temperature performance. I want fast charging capability. Uh, I want cost to be really cheap. You have a spider chart and honestly, while everyone wants everything, you're not going to get everything with every battery. Each battery is going to have some highs and some lows on that. And so they're going to coexist. And, and I think based on the application and the environment conditions, you choose one tech over the other. Uh, and the existing techs will continue for some time because there's so much infrastructure and cost advantages built in that the new tech will start to come in areas where there's a premium and then it will come down on the... And when you say new tech, you're talking about hydrogen? And no, I'm talking about, for example, I see hydrogen more as a source of, uh, you know, it's an energy, it's burning it up, right, versus versus uh, a storage device, right? I see that uh, um, uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, new tech, um, within the current NMC chemistries and stuff, I see some significant advancements where energies could go from you know, up to 500 watt hours per kg, right? I see cycle life improvements. I see a lot of things with new nanotechnologies, new materials. So the current tech going to that level, but then you see new areas of solid state that could come in, that could even bring higher levels of safety. Um, uh, if the manufacturing processes are worked out, could enable us to have very low cost solutions coming through. Uh, and all of them, I think, will find its way as they come in. But the consumer is more aware today and uh, and they're going to choose it. And like anything, it's good to have these options because the material costs of nickel goes up or some material goes up, the other one comes in, right? So it balances also the raw material prices that come through. Hmm? Any last message to entrepreneurs, future entrepreneurs, builders? Do something you're passionate about, you know, give it 100% if you're swimming halfway the lake, don't stop, just swim to the other end, right? Push through, right? It's a tough market. But um, when things go tough, think of the larger picture of the impact you're creating today, especially if you're in the EV space and what you are, getting jobs and creating impact and keep that bigger picture to take you through these difficult times. Just one last question, Chetan. I'm sure that you invest a lot in various things and we have a couple of sponsors who are investors like Crip Invest, Imperial Holdings. Where do you park your money? How do you multiply it so much? <laughs> Uh, I think the first thing is I put it where uh, 
I'm involved. So I definitely put in the companies that we do and the other companies we started in Viria. So we do powertrains, we do autonomous technologies, we do a host of new pieces. So uh, one space is you control something, you control an idea, you control that, put money in there, right? Um, second is invest in some startups and others. And uh, uh, others, you know, through wealth management, focus on mutual funds and more lower risk areas that you can do. So balance a portfolio. Uh, across things you control versus seeing people who are very good at their area and using their expertise and uh, and then uh, create a you know a longer term approach in general no i think i love that invest in yourself the businesses that you can build that's the best best place to invest and multiply thank you so much chetan for being Akash. part of this quick podcast yeah. good to have you same here same Thanks, pleasure being here Thanks.